Um, I'm going to begin by an update on our number of cases, but I'm going to use the number that's published on our website as of 9 a.m. this morning, just because, as you know, this is a dynamic situation as different provinces are announcing uh, different things as we speak. Uh, so in Canada, as of 9 a.m. this morning, there were 7,708 cases of COVID-19, including 89 deaths. So in addition, at any point in time, there are many other people under investigation awaiting lab results or not yet tested. So even if you're not hearing cases in your community, it doesn't mean that there are no cases and that there are no exposures waiting to happen. So. We now have completed tests for over 236,000 people in Canada, with about 3.5% of people confirmed as positive and over 93% confirmed as negative. Pour le moment, la principale préoccupation concerne l'introduction à la propagation Our greatest de concerns at the moment relate to the introduction and spread of the virus in enclosed settings where vulnerable purple people reside. We currently have a number of ongoing outbreaks in long-term care homes, cases in First Nations and Inuit communities, and a correctional facility. These events are deeply troubling, both because they result in outbreaks that accelerate the spread of the virus, but more so because of the serious consequences for these high-risk individuals. However, the young are not spared from severe outcomes. Adults under 40 account for 10% of hospitalizations and just yesterday, there was a report of an individual in their 30s who died of COVID-19. Our greatest concern at the moment relate to the introduction and spread of the virus in enclosed settings where vulnerable people reside. We currently have a number of ongoing outbreaks in long-term care homes, cases in First Nations and Inuit communities, and a corrections facility. These events are deeply troubling, both because they result in outbreaks that accelerate the spread of the virus, but more so because of the serious consequences for the, those high-risk individuals. However, the young are not spared from severe outcomes. Adults under 40 account for 10% of hospitalizations, and just yesterday, there was the first report of an individual in their 30s who died of COVID-19. We must prevent introduction into vulnerable population at all costs, as well as prevent new travel-related cases from sparking community spread. As all Canadians continue to strictly adhere to physical distancing to protect themselves and others, we expect all travellers coming into Canada to join these efforts. Moreover, because of an increased risk of COVID-19 outside of Canada, the quarantine order now in place requires these travellers go directly home upon arrival and quarantine themselves for 14 days. So we all need to keep up physical distancing while maintaining social connections.